Welcome back. In this video, we'll continue our discussion on dislocation imaging in TEM. Here, we'll focus on how to set up the two-beam condition to do good dislocation imaging and discussing the invisibility criteria. We will also spend one slide to briefly discuss the coffee beam contrast. When doing dislocation imaging, it's always nice to set up the two-beam condition. However, there are more details on how you can actually set that up. For example, in the first case, you have the bright picotry line going through the center of the diffracted beam. In this case, both the excitation error and the new concept called deviation parameter are equal to zero. To me, both the excitation error and the deviation parameter are the same thing. That's why we use only one letter S to represent both. In the second case, we have the bright Kikuchi line going through the inner part of the diffracted beam. In diffraction pattern, it cuts through the top part of the rare rod, also the negative part of the rare rod. We can also have the bright Kikuchi band going through the outer side of the diffracted beam. In this case, the evil sphere will cut through the lower part of the rare rod, also the positive part of the rare rod. The excitation error and deviation parameter are greater than zero. Then, what does dislocations appear in micrographs when we image them under these three conditions? The image on the left has zero excitation error, zero deviation parameter. The image is not too bad, but the strain field from the dislocations are highlighted, especially the latter's distortion around dislocations. For the micrograph in the middle, that's when you have the bright Kikuchi line going through the inner part of the diffracted beam. This gives you the worst dislocation imaging condition out of the three. The reason you see darker matrix is because when you set the excitation error into negative, you actually tilt the matrix closer to the Bragg's condition. This will lead to a lower intensity of the direct beam from the matrix thus leaving a darker background. In the third case, when you have the bright Kikuchi line going through slightly outside to the diffraction spot or the diffracted beam will have positive excitation error and the deviation parameter. This gives you the best imaging condition. Under this imaging condition, you tilt the matrix slightly further away from the Bragg's condition, giving you a cleaner and a better background. The dislocation lines will be highlighted. The regions next to the dislocation lines will not show too much contrast. When you do dislocation imaging in the future, please remember use the third imaging condition to give you the best results. In this slide, I'll show you the effect of using plus G or minus G on the dislocation imaging. Remember in TEM, we cannot directly image dislocations. What we image are the strain field around dislocations caused by the lattice distortion from the dislocation core. Let's look at the edge dislocation here. On one end, the lattice planes bends in this way, but on the other end, it bends in another way. What this tells us is when we set the bent lattice planes into Bragg condition, we can only do one of them, either the one on the left or the one on the right. Therefore, if we change the G vector we use, for example, changing from 002 to 002 bar, the position of the dislocation lines that appear in the specimen would change. In the example on the right, which is taken straight from the textbook, what you see here is a dislocation dipole in copper. By changing the sign of G, the appearance of the distance between these two dislocations changes. The one on the top is much narrower compared to the one down the bottom. One challenge in dislocation imaging we usually face is when the dislocation density is too high. This happens when the metal has undergone cold rolling, when there's a lot of plastic strain stored in the material. Dislocations will self-organize to form cell-like structure. To image individual dislocations is nearly impossible. Next, let's look at the visibility and invisibility criteria for dislocation imaging. Recall in the stacking fault imaging video, we said if g dot r is equal to zero, then the stacking fault will be invisible. r is the fault vector 
Here, we replace r by b, bogus vector, if g dot b is equal to 0, in general, the dislocation will be invisible. Here is a very nice example from Eddington's book. By selecting different g vectors, you can make some dislocations visible, while others invisible. To determine the bogus vector of each dislocation, what you can do is you list out all the g vectors you used, and also all the possible bogus vectors. Then you construct the g dot b matrix to determine which ones are zeros and which ones are non-zeros. From this, you can deduce the exact Bergs vector of each dislocation line. One interesting observation, if you look at the dislocation lines here, you see bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark contrast. Why this is the case? If you know the answer, that's great. If you don't know the answer, you can go back to the previous video to find out why. Let's ask ourselves two other whys. Why, when g dot b is not equal to 0, the dislocation will be visible? Why, when g dot b is equal to 0, dislocation will be invisible? Let's look at the example on the left first. In this condition, we have the Bergs vector pointing to the right. When we have the electron beam travel through the region next to the dislocation core, the local lattice bending will scatter electrons in a different way, giving you the diffraction contrast. In this condition, g is parallel to the Bergs vector, then g dot b will not be equal to zero, and the dislocation will be visible. In the second case, let's turn the dislocation structure 90 degrees, and assume the electron beam still comes in from the top. Under this imaging condition, the g vector is still pointing the same direction as the previous one, but there's no local lattice bending to redirect the electron beam. Therefore, the dislocation will be invisible. Also notice the Bergs vector direction and the g vector direction that are perpendicular to each other. g dot b is equal to zero, and this is the invisibility criterion for dislocation imaging in TEM. The g dot b visibility invisibility criteria can be applied to most of the dislocations before we wrap up today's video, I'd like to briefly discuss the coffee bean contrast. In addition to dislocations, there are other microstructural features can impose lattice strains or lattice bending around them. One classical example is the coherent precipitates like GP zones. They play a similar role as the dislocation cores do. In both cases, the contrast arises due to the local lattice bending and both are diffraction contrast. In the next couple of videos, we'll introduce an alternative approach to do dislocation imaging called weak beam dark field technique.